Hello and welcome. This is Eagle Eye 621, and what you see behind me are fully automatic chicken farms, both in the cooked and raw variety. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a maximum efficiency chicken farm, explain to you why we can do these more simplified chicken farms compared to the older, more complicated versions, explain to you exactly how to make this, going through all the components, and then show you over there something that may get you banned from your server if you actually try and build it, which is what we try and make sure these things don't become. And you can check the description for the timestamps on each of these different components. But let's start with the old style chicken cooker. Now, things have changed in the 1.14 version that makes this no longer work. But chickens have a couple of special properties that we can utilize to make fully automatic farms. The first one is that they lay eggs, and that those eggs shot out of a dispenser might hatch. Now, it's very important this has to be a dispenser. If you use a dropper instead, it will just drop the eggs. Also very important is that the baby chickens are shorter than half a block. It may look like they're taller than half a block, but when the lava comes out, you can see they remain unharmed. However, when they grow up, they are taller than half a block. So you have this basic setup where you have some seed chickens, and the seed chickens are the ones that lay the eggs. You put that through a hopper into a dispenser that shoots out into a one block area with a half slab, and the babies will eventually grow up, as this one just did very conveniently for the camera. And then you have to kill it, so you hit it with a tick of a lava pulse. And the way the lava pulse is triggered is, depending on the design, either by taking a comparator signal from the hopper or a comparator signal from the dispenser itself. Now, the concern is always you don't want to burn the drops, so you want to shoot the lava for a brief moment. The chicken would die after the lava was retracted, and because this is a half slab, the hopper can pull the drops through the half slab, as you just saw, and into the chest. Now, in 1.14, they changed the way that works, and you can see that we have sort of a strange variety of drops between some raw chicken, some feathers, and some cooked chicken, uh, but not nearly as many as have actually been killed. Because now, even with the system, most of your drops get destroyed. Now, most of the tech around the chicken farms before 1.14 was all about this sort of setup around here. And what you can see I did in this one is use an automatic dispenser system that has a comparator reading if there's any items in this dispenser. If there are, it powers a sticky piston which pushes up this observer facing into another observer to make a quick clock which will shoot that egg. At the same time, this observer sees that, it outputs into this repeater on a two tick delay just so it doesn't flash too fast, and then this observer sees it and pulses this dispenser for the lava as you just saw. Now all of this is completely counterproductive so the new systems are actually a lot more simple. Now, this is the same automatic dispenser setup that you saw in the other one. This is the same seed chicken containment area, which is just two blocks high to make sure they can't get out. Uh, these vines in here just uh, help with the lag because they remove the entity cramming issue, which you have if you have more than 24 entities in a single space. And instead, we just have a solid block that is above the half slab. And what happens is fairly straightforward. The baby chickens live comfortably in that half, half gap area because it is a half slab. When they become adults, they grow up, their head pops into that solid block, and they suffocate. And those drops are collected into this chest. Now, when you build this in your world, don't use glass the way that I've used it to surround this area because sometimes the drops or the entities can clip through the glass. Use solid blocks instead. Now, very similar on this side, 
we're just going to leave the lava here. We don't need to pulse it back and forth. We have the same automatic dispensing system and the same half slab. What we've done here that's different than the other version is we're using a hopper mine cart to pick up the items. And because hopper mine carts pick up items faster than the hoppers do, they're actually able to grab the drops before the lava destroys it. We don't even need to worry about pulsing the lava. We can just leave it there and the hopper mine cart will get the items anyways. That is then on top of a hopper, which then feeds into your chest and you have your cook variety as long as some feathers. Whereas obviously on this side, you have your raw chicken as well again as the feathers. Now, I will show you how to make these components next, and then I'll tell you about making a maximum efficiency design. This is pretty much what you see is what you get in terms of where the seed chickens are going to stay. This is the holder. You lure the chickens into this area with seeds, and then you can breed them, or you can just collect eggs and manually throw them down there. And those are your seed chickens. This is the automatic dispensing system. I'll show you the materials here. There's two observers, a glass block just to put the comparator on. This can be anything you want. A sticky piston as well as a dispenser and a hopper. Again, this does have to be a dispenser. If it's a dropper, it won't work. And the layout is exactly as you can see with the two hopper, two, excuse me, observers facing each other waiting to be pushed up by that sticky piston. And for the hopper minecart system, you do have to do a little bit of a setup. You have to put a rail down, if you can see that, on top of the hopper to be able to put the hopper minecart on it. And then you can just drop a entity block on that. And of course that did not work because I forgot to remove the rail, which you have to do first. And let's do that again. And grab some sand and that just prevents you from accidentally pushing it around um, if you're not going for the maximum efficiency design which I will show you in a moment you can instead just push a half slab into it to save a blocks worth of height like that and then there it will remain now let's see the overall materials you will need for both of these machines. And this half is the raw version. The vine as well, the sticky piston, you need a chest to put your items in. Your comparator as well as your dispenser with some hoppers, observers, half slabs. The glass, as I said in your world, use stone instead. And then you need a solid block to suffocate them. And on the other side are the materials you need for the cooked variety, which are pretty much the same with the addition of the sand block for the rail and minecart and the lava bucket as opposed to the smooth stone. So let's talk some numbers. Baby chickens take 20 minutes to become adults, so you need to be able to have a chamber that will store them for those 20 minutes, but not let them get out before you can kill them for their drops. The adult chickens will drop an egg somewhere between five and 10 minutes. And you can use seeds as well as these other materials to breed them and they're breedable every five minutes. And that's helpful when you're filling up your seed chicken area. Now, with regard to the eggs, this is where the math comes more into play. Each egg has a one in eight chance of spawning a chicken and one out of 32 of those spawns. That's not overall. That's one out of every 32 out of this one out of every eight will spawn four chickens instead of the one. And that means that 31 out of 256 will spawn one chicken and one out of 256 will spawn the four. And when you do the math on that, that means each egg is worth about 35 out of 260, 256, or about 1.4 chickens. Now that's important in terms of trying to figure out what our maximum efficiency design is. So first we need to know the growing chamber can hold 24 chickens. 
As I explained earlier, if you have 25 entities in the same block, they will start to take cramming damage and die. Now, the vines, as well as if you put a ladder, will prevent that, but you can't have a vine on the same block as the half slab, and you need the half slab as your sorter between the babies and the adults, which you will kill. So, your max useful eggs in 20 minutes is going to be how many chickens you can put there. So that's 24 is the number of chickens that you can have and the number we got, which turns out to 8.77 eggs per minute. So that's how many eggs you want to be firing through your machine. And since chickens lay about one egg every seven and a half minutes, that means they will lay about 0.13 eggs per minute. And for maximum useful eggs, that means you divide here and you end up with just under 66 seed chickens. Now you do want to round that down because the 25th will cause entity cramming damage. So your maximum efficiency chicken farm will have 65 seed chickens. And the seed chickens, again, are the chickens you have in this chamber. And the 65 chickens will ensure that you always have 24 baby chickens in this area, or 23, and then when one grows up will be about the same time that you will have your 24th here. So that's how you end up with your maximum output. Now, I wouldn't suggest actually doing that in your world because you really don't need that much chicken. And even though putting the vines here will reduce the lag somewhat, having 65 entities in your world loaded all the time can generate additional lag. And frankly, isn't worth it for that kind of drop. You can trade the raw chicken for emeralds, but there are better trades that you can have. And the cooked chicken you obviously eat, but you're not going to be eating 24 cooked chicken per minute, especially if you have some sort of an AFK session and this thing is running in the background the whole time while your other machine is running. Now, as promised, what you do not want to build on your server unless you are planning on getting booted. And this thing right here is basically a server crasher. So the way that this works and what you avoid by having the separate chambers over there is you have your seed chickens in a area and they produce eggs that are collected in these hoppers. Now this actually is a dropper over here so that it will shoot out the plain egg. It won't break and make a chicken to get pushed up through this water stream into this dispenser with another automatic dropper, which then throws the egg against this wall. And that will make a baby chicken, which will fall into your seed chicken area. And what you have here is an exponential chicken growth. So you have the chickens that lay the eggs, the eggs get sent up and around and become chickens those new chickens lay more eggs, those additional eggs become more chickens, and so on and so forth until your server crashes because you have too many entities in your world causing too much lag. So, as I said, don't don't build this. Don't don't be that don't be that person that, that takes out your whole server. Instead, build these nice little compact chicken farms. Uh, I like having a chicken farm in my world because it does make it very easy to get very decent food. It's not the best food in the game, but because it's completely free, once you set this up, it is what I prefer to use. Now, if you found this video helpful, I'd appreciate a like, and for more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for stopping by.